if I paid you half a million dollars to live in this house, would you do it? What? What kind of question is that? That doesn't make sense. Why would this guy pay me half a million dollars to live in a house? That's what we're talking about, folks. I got a house in the ghetto. In the ghetto. It is a ghetto home. But if you live there, i show you how to get $500,000 to do so. Sounds crazy? It's not. I'm going to show you exactly how it's done right now. This is your show. This is the show where I work for you directly, taking your needs. I'm going through the MLS, and I'm trying to find the best possible deal for you guys. Put down 25%. That's the perfect way to buy this. That's why real estate investing is the greatest industry in the world. Welcome to the show, folks. My name is James Wise. This is the MLS Search and Analysis Show on Holton Wise TV. If you are new to real estate, I hope you subscribe. I hope you stick around because we try to show you guys real estate concepts, real estate strategies, this or that. And you could utilize these in any market in the world, your own home market. But if you want to go one step further and partner with us, do deals with us in the Cleveland market, you can do so by sending my team an email, sales at HoltonWise.com. Give us your number. You could also click the show notes below. I got a link to it. And you get your own personalized show like I've made for Candace. Candace is a truck driver from New Jersey. And you got an interesting thing you want to do, Candace. You are an over-the-road truck driver, right? So you're not home that often. You travel quite a bit. So it doesn't really matter where you live, right? You don't have to get a new job, okay? So you're thinking about relocating to Cleveland because it's much, much cheaper than New Jersey. And you told me the first investment you want to do, you want to house hack it. You want to live there, okay? So I got a deal you're going to house hack, okay? Make you half a million dollars. going to pay you half a million dollars to live there, okay? Not crazy. Not crazy at all. That means... You don't have to pay a mortgage. You get paid to live there, and when it's all said and done, you're going to get paid over half a million dollars. But there's, of course, going to be some drawbacks. It's not all freaking sunshine and sugar kisses, baby. No, no, no. With good, there's bad. And one other thing before I get into the property with you, Candace, you had asked me. You said, hey, I'm new to Holton Wise TV. Uh, if... I like the property you analyze for me, all the videos you're going to do for me. Will you work with me as your broker? Absolutely, absolutely. I will be able to represent you in any of these deals I present you. But one thing you need to know about what we do here at Holton Wise, which could potentially affect uh, your decision on that, okay? We do not... Uh, do personalized in-person tours, right? Like James Wise, days of like driving around buyers to like view homes is not my thing. Those days are long gone. I don't, I don't do that. As a matter of fact, I really never got into that. Okay, maybe like one or two uh, off buyers, but I've always been an investment realtor, right? So driving buyers to properties. It's not what I do. It's not a service that Holton Wise offers. Okay, so uh, with what we do, that's no big deal because 99.9% uh, .9 of the properties we sell are rental properties uh, and the investors are often from all over the world right uh, so most people are not really concerned uh, with doing a tour right that's why we do the video tours on the investment properties for sale show or we even offer people that ability on this show as well as an upgraded package for you since you're planning on living there uh, actually getting in and feeling getting the feel of the home maybe something you're interested in if that is you'll have to hire another agent from another company because uh, that's not something you can get from Holton Wise, but that's okay. You can get all the information on the property from me. And if before making your offer, uh, you really want to tour that with an agent, uh, you could do so with another agent. What we also do here is oftentimes we'll put in these offers contingent on a general home inspection. And sometimes investors will make the trip to Cleveland uh, and be there with the third party home inspector that they've hired, who's usually spending three to four hours there nitpicking the property. No problem with you tagging along to that and being there for that or even being there for the appraisal, right? So if you want to do it that way, you absolutely could. And I could represent you if you want an agent to walk it with you that is not something i can do but with all that said let me show you how i can get you a half a million dollars by living in the property that i've identified for you a four unit apartment building i'm gonna pay you half a million dollars to live there two please No, I think it'll shrink 
Welcome back, folks. Let's pull up the house, right? Pull up the house. We're talking about some stuff. It sounds a little clickbaity, right? Would you live here if I paid you $544,500, right? Over half a million dollars. If you're confused, don't worry. It's not that confusing. What we like to call this, folks, is house hacking, okay? Before I made my millions in real estate, I also did some house hacking with that man right there, okay? First home I ever bought was a uh, single family house, it was 08 or 09, something like that, and I rented out the basement. We created a little basement apartment, and my man Steve, my brother right there, was my first tenant. How was how was the house hack, brother? Oh, well, you know, it was, it was good for me. <laughs> we did a... Uh, we did a little bit of uh, drinking of the four locos when we built your uh, little apartment. So a couple of the walls were off plumb, and then my brother continued to drink a little bit of the four locos on work nights, uh, which upset my other roommate, my uh, wife, girlfriend at the time. <laughs> but we got through it, right? And uh, from there, right, that was the start of my real estate business. And, you know, fast forward to today, sold over $200 million worth of stuff, right? So you can... You can really uh, take advantage of these house hack situations, right? So it's not all pie in the sky. And if you actually run the numbers, it actually makes sense, right? Like for this particular one, again, $544,500. That's how it'll work. But we got to talk about the pros. We got to talk about the cons, right? This is real world stuff. This can actually happen for you. But it's not all sunshine and honeybees, baby. Your tenant might not be your brother, okay? Here's what we have. This house, 1135 East 74th, Cleveland, 44103. They have it listed at $134,999. It's been on the market 17 days. What this is is actually two duplexes, right? So we have four units. And I'm not going to lie to you, folks. I'm going to tell you right now. This motherfucker's in the ghetto, okay? This, this neighborhood is definitely what I would call the ghetto, right? This is a ghetto neighborhood, okay? Don't think it's not. Right? I ain't gonna sugarcoat it, right? Would you get would you be willing to live in the ghetto for half a mil? That's the question, okay? Now we got three tenants in there, right? Three tenants are already in this bad boy. And uh, you know, if you look through the pictures here, what it looks like is it looks like what you'd expect ghetto apartment buildings to look like, right? I mean, this is the empty unit, right? This is the unit you're gonna be living in, okay? You're probably going to want to fix that up a little bit. Do a little bit of uh, elbow grease. Put a little elbow grease on this. But, right, these are the other units. That one's not too, too bad. But this is definitely low-income investing. This is a difficult neighborhood. It's, it's, it's a very tough neighborhood, okay? I often talk to out-of-state real estate investors, and I discourage them. Uh, from buying properties in these neighborhoods, right? The price points are incredibly cheap, uh, but these are very tough to, to manage these assets. I often talk to them about how you shouldn't do the deal. Deals like that should be saved for the locals, a la you, right? You're going to live there, okay? Living there is going to do several things for you, right? It allows you to have eyes on your units 24-7, Allows you to save money. You don't have to pay somebody like me to manage the property. You don't have to pay somebody like me to cut the grass. You don't have to worry about getting people actually working for you. Because, like, big-time property management companies like Holton Wise, we typically shy away from properties like this, right? Because it's very, very hard uh, for investors to pay us to operate the property and still make it profitable because of how difficult it is. Not to mention it's hard for people like me to staff my company because a lot of the maintenance guys don't like going to properties like this, don't like going to these neighborhoods because they're dangerous, right? So when we talk about would you live here for half a million dollars, I ain't bullshitting you. I'm going to go over the numbers in a minute. You could make half a million dollars while living here. But I don't want to sugarcoat it and shit you that it's going to be an easy show, right? You are definitely going to have to live in the ghetto. Is a half million dollars worth living in the ghetto, right? You're going to have to watch these tenants like a hawk. I would imagine you want to make sure your other three units are on Section 8. If you get them on Section 8, that's like the cheat code, right? With investing in the ghetto, investing in low-income neighborhoods, you run into people not paying rent, right? I mean, you saw the pictures. 
pretty sloppy, right? Pretty pretty gross in there. But that's not the like the worst, right? If you got some units that look like that, but the rent still comes in, hey, that's a pretty good case. That's a good scenario to have in the ghetto, right? That's probably about best case scenario. That's what you could expect, right? It is what it is. That's the way the cookie crumbles, man. That's what you're signing up for if you do a deal like this, right? That's the the pain, the blood, sweat, and tears that you're putting in to get that half a mil, right? So if you could do that and get your rent, that's that's it. That's that's what you're signing up for, right? So, how do you get your rent every single month? You got to go Section 8, man. You got to go Section 8. You go Section 8, government pays it, right? You don't go Section 8. You got to worry about people not paying rent. Then you got to evict them, this or that. Now, normally when you're in the ghetto and you evict people, you open yourself up to another new problem, which is your property becomes vacant, and then criminals from around the neighborhood will break in, steal your hot water tank, steal your furnace, uh, steal your copper piping. That creates a big problem. Probably not going to have that scenario when you're actually living there. Again, having eyes on the unit, watching it like a hawk, having like a one-on-one -on -one actual interpersonal relationship with your tenants who hopefully will become Section 8 tenants one day because uh, the, there's a couple current tenants in there. They're not Section 8. But as you turn these units over, you want them to become Section 8 is what I'm trying to tell you, right? Doing that, you could probably mitigate a lot of the issues uh, that someone who's more hands-off um, would be dealing with, right? A property manager cannot go to your rental property every single day. A property manager cannot sit on the fucking front porch every single day to make sure nothing bad's happening. But if you live there, you can, okay? So this is how the numbers would play out. This is where I will get the half a million dollars, right? You're going to live there, and you're going to make half a million. You're going to get paid half a million dollars to live there, right? This is how this would all play out. You got four units. You rent three of them for $750 a piece, okay? That's 9000 each per year. The fourth unit, of course, is where you live, okay? So no rent comes in. $2,250 comes in, an average of $27,000. As far as the price point, when you're in the ghetto, things are cheap, 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 right? We have two duplexes on one lot. They're asking $134,999. You might be watching this like, damn, that's pretty cheap, dude. That is not cheap enough, okay? That's not even cheap enough. You would actually be overpaying. In this neighborhood, you don't have to pay $135,000 to take down two duplexes. I think that would be too much. I think what would be a reasonable price point for this property would be $100,000. $100,000, okay? Now, let's pay attention to how this all works out. As far as your rent goes, $2,250 a month. That's what you should anticipate. And this is going off the assumption that you've eventually put Section 8 tenants in there, right? Because I have a repairs and maintenance, a vacancy and non-payment, and a capital expenditure estimated expense, right? $1,350 a year for each of these three items, right? That's assuming you have Section 8 tenants. If you're in the ghetto and you're not renting to Section 8, it's, it's like too impossible for us to figure out how often you're going to collect rent because, you know, there's just so many variables. You really need to go with that cheat code and get government guaranteed rent in there. Then you could reasonably assume uh, how frequently you'll collect your rent. But, of course, you'll still get turnovers here and there. And when you do your uh, turnovers, that's when you do the repair, uh, majority of your repairs and maintenance, right? So that's why we're calculating those 1350 line items for each of those three things. CapEx, though, slightly different. CapEx is like your roof, your furnace is your hot water tank. The type of tenants you have don't really matter to those three items. But if you own a house for 30 years, right, a roof's going to last you 30 years. Hot water tanks are going to last you 15 years. Furnaces are going to last you 30 years. Furnaces cost about three grand to replace hot water tanks about a grand roofs about seven eight and the other stuff like painting and unit turns i think you could do a lot of that yourself but those capital expenditure items i just mentioned you're probably gonna need to hire a professional right you can't just be like a regular joe schmo and just hugging up a fucking furnace it doesn't work that way so the prices i gave you on those three items that'd be if you paid a professional contracting company but like as far as unit turns and painting units or fixing this or fixing that or service calls here and there you need to be doing that stuff yourself right saving that money right Cutting the grass. you got to cut the grass, of course, right? So you don't have a lawn care fee. And then, of course, big fee you don't have is you don't have property management fees, right? So reasonable expectations of performance. $2,250 comes in. You're spending approximately $764 a month to operate your rental property. That means you're going to profit every month. You're going to get paid $1,486 every month. That is what you can reasonably expect to take home, right? That is $17,832 a year, right? This could be your part-time job. Owning this home, managing this home could be your part-time job. Pays you seventeen dollars a year on average. And here's where it gets good. 
You don't need really any money to do this deal, and I'm going to show you how to make that half a mil. This, this is the meat, okay? You're going to buy it for a hundred grand. You don't need a hundred grand. All you need is thirty-five hundred dollars, right? When you guys watch my show, I normally work uh, with pure investors, right? So we're utilizing investment property financing, which is typically twenty-five percent down, okay? But this is owner-occupied financing. You get so much better terms if you're going to live there. You have to live there for one year, just so you know. You could actually move out of this property after a year and move on to the next one. Again, it's called house hacking. I did it. My brother lived in my house. Turned out fucking great for me, right? Uh, maybe one day you'll have your own show. Hopefully it's not in fucking Cleveland, though, because then I'll have to come after you and fucking destroy you, because this is my territory. But anyway, back to, <laughs> back, back, to the, back to making you numbers, okay? Back to making the numbers work here, right? So $100,000, right? All you got to do is put 3500 into it, okay? Bank's going to loan you 96 and a half. So that 1400 I said you're making, you got to pay this mortgage off now, so that's $407. That leaves a pure net cash flow after your mortgage, 1079 Okay, so that's 13000 a year, right? So you're making 13000 a year off your job managing this property that you didn't actually really pay for because you put pennies into it, right? All you put in is... Is uh is 3,500 right? So that projects out to a cash on cash return of 370 freaking percent, right? Because you only put 3,500 into it, but you're bringing home about 13k. Now here, here's the juice. Here's where I get the half a million dollar number. Okay, you take that 12,948 dollars estimated. Let's do this over a 30 year hold because that's the length of your mortgage, right? That would be over that 30 years. $388,000 in cash flow, okay? Then let's say you're going to sell the property. And I'm not going to bank on some crazy appreciation or shoot smoke up your butt telling you properties are going to appreciate like crazy. This is the Cleveland ghetto, baby. I don't want you to forget that, right? So I'm just going to tack on 2%, right? Keep up with inflation. The dollar inflates. So 30-year value, 160K, right? You're buying it today for 130, or I mean, I'm sorry, 100. 160 is what you sell it for, right? And after that 30 years, by the way, you ain't got no more mortgage, right? You got your mortgage paid off before you took home your 388,000, right? So 388,000 plus your $160,000, okay? That is $548,000, but... The number I gave you at the beginning of the show was 544 and a half because don't forget you did originally invest 3500. That folks is where I got the half million dollar number, the 544 and a half thousand dollar number. So, it's up to you. Will it be super easy all the time? No, hell no. But I don't know anybody else that's getting paid a half a million dollars to live somewhere. So, the question to you now is you got to go back to the drawing board. As a would-be new investor who wants to house hack, would you be willing to live in the Cleveland ghetto for a half million dollars? Thanks for watching. Subscribe to Holton Wise TV for more financial information, education, and entertainment.